Brother War. Your ears burning. We were just talking about you. What's going on, black people? And non black people? Fed agents posing as black people? Kelly, what up, good people? It's always funny when I see uh, names of people I know. I feel like we actually had a room together, even though we're not. I am. Ooh, Shay, <laughs> it's never a good thing when somebody black says you look tired. Um, although I am, it has been a long ass week. Um, I literally spent um, time before a Zoom meeting I was on um, writing a statement for Breonna Taylor, who we're going to talk about um, in a bit. Whenever Ben, he just finished talking to April Ryan, uh, and whenever he's able to jump on, we'll get into it. Um, but I have written um, three statements in the last week about the death of Black people, Black young people. Um, I continue to think about the sad reality that um, Ahmaud Arbery would have celebrated his 26th birthday on Friday um, if she were not murdered um, how long? weeks ago. Uh, Breonna Taylor would be 26 um, years old. And if Trayvon weren't murdered by George Zimmerman's punk ass, he'd be 26. Um, and so I definitely have lost um, sleep this week um, thinking about the tragedy um, that we are continuing to endure. But note it, I will, under eye cream, process tonight. Thanks, Dre. Uh, please, we, I wanna follow up too, um, because you asked some questions that came up in the discussion with uh, Michelle Feminista Jones that uh, are super important. And I wanna make sure that we, um, we talk about them. Uh, so that would be continued. We're definitely gonna talk more about the Second Amendment, and particularly because Breonna Taylor's um, partner um, is a registered gun owner. Uh, and when the police um, were issuing or uh, executing a warrant, um, stare quotes around that, um, he fired his uh, uh, legally mandated right to own weapon. Um, and they're using that to justify having unloaded more than 20 clips in her house. Uh, I appreciate you. I mean, you know, shade to shade because it's always a part, part true. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, Ray. Uh, um, so yeah, it's been a tough week. And you know, my work generally is um, exhausting. Um, I have been trying to schedule um, time to rest and work out um, and reflect. Uh, my goal has been to rest more and work less. Um, but that's not always attainable. So such as the struggle. Uh, how are you all? I imagine y'all struggling with this stuff too. Uh, if you don't know, NBJC uh, launched a survey, a data collection effort called COVID While Black and Queer to build on COVID While Black. Um, you don't have to be black and queer to respond to it, uh, but we wanted to be intentional in acknowledging that there are members of our community who are. Um, so you can find it at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash COVID While Black and Queer, all lowercase, it's case sensitive. Um, please take the survey, it's short. Uh, please share it uh, because we need data. Passive erasure of black body. Um, yeah, I wanna further discuss because there's nothing uh, passive about Derek's um, scholarship or the principle of radical um, Racial realism, I keep calling it radical, but it's racial realism. Um, the concept is radical. Um, it acknowledges that that's a part of our um, experience. And I think that also the acknowledgement of the way that racism works um, and how it often 
um, dismisses and justifies black death, right? Um, for me, there's the uh, reflexive habit that happened when uh, Mike Brown was murdered. They then tried to say, but he stole cigarettes as if that would justify it. When um, Trayvon was murdered, they tried to say that he stole Skittles and a uh, Arizona iced tea as if that would justify it. When um, the video finally circulated around Ahmaud Arbery, they tried to now say that he walked into a construction site, didn't steal anything clearly on camera, but he shouldn't have walked into a construction site. Um, and now with Brianna, I'm sure they'll find some way to, or if they have already tried to find some way to justify it. Uh, but the reality is now, uh, and this is the sad part, right? Where um, we're leaning into and leading with like, she was an EMT, she was a service worker, she was unarmed, she had no, no, no record. The danger in that for me is that it otherwise feeds into this narrative, which says that some deaths are justifiable. In particular, if you have a criminal record, didn't graduate from high school, um, aren't otherwise demonstrating the kinds of things associated with um, the politics of respectability, then you deserve to die. Um, and that's dangerous. I don't think that, that that is what they're arguing or offering. Um, I think what Michelle was trying to uh, suggest yesterday is that we have to tell the whole picture. And a part of the picture is us appreciating that um, we need to be armed, period, full stop. Um, and not everybody can do it, right? This is uh, Harriet Tubman was a conductor for a reason, um, but those who uh, are unable or unwilling to be armed um, should get out of the way of folks who um, can and want to and will be in this moment. Um, so I think that's what's happening. I'm exhausted. Uh, Listen, um, I have I struggle um, to this point about being exhausted mightily, but I'm gonna grab something that I keep holding on to that speaks to this. hospital, uh, that you're constantly reminded of the trauma that exists in the world. Um, so these were sent to me by our sister Nafis, who I'm going to post, who is an artist uh, who made some masks um, that um, she sent to me in part because we are helping to source them for families um, and individuals that um, can't access them. Um, and this one in particular is a Baldwin quote um, that says, for while the tale of how we suffer and how we are delighted and how we may triumph is never new, it always must be heard. There isn't any other tale to tell. It's the only light we've got in all this darkness, right? Uh, and so this is again, for me, an affirmation that um, even while fatigued um, and acknowledging that we're tired, we still have to tell um, the tale. Um, and then this one from Sister Tony um, is, this is precisely the time when artists go to work. Um, there's no time for despair no place for self-pity, no need for silence, and no room for fear. We do language. That is how civilizations heal. Um, and so in particular, brother, to your point, for those of us who are writers um, or otherwise have the gift of the pen or the ability to create as you do, um, to tell stories cinematically, um, we're obligated to do it, um, especially at a time um, like this. I will text this to you. I'll take a picture of it and send it to you. Um, because you should hold on to it. This is, you know, our ancestors know, and Tony Tony was uh, somebody who knew. Um, so we got to continue to do the work, even when we're tired. Um, so we are waiting whenever Ben jumps, and we'll get into it. No, thank you. I appreciate y'all. This shit's complicated, too. Um, that's the other thing. There are no, no easy answers for any of this stuff. It is incredibly complicated. Um, and sometimes we just have to struggle through together. Here's the, let me read the, let me back up. I read this part yesterday. If anybody sees Ben, when well, you can't yell and tell me, um, but let me know. So before the quote I read yesterday around racial realism, and I'll read it again for those who weren't in on the conversation with me and Michelle, Feminista Jones, uh, 
Uh, this is from a book on critical race theory. It's an anthology, really powerful book. You should get it um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Um, and this is an essay on racial realism um, that is written by one of the uh, fathers of critical race theory, um, Derek Bell, um, who was a Harvard um, professor. So he starts by saying, I'm convinced that there is something real out there in America for black people. It is not, however, the romantic love of integration. It is surely not the long sought goal of equality under law, though we must maintain the struggle against racism. Else the erosion of black rights will become even worse than it is now, right? So an acknowledgement that to your point, there are uh, black bodies and the blood of black people um, that line streets. Um, and if we don't continue to fight, um, then that condition will continue to exist. It might even be exacerbated. He then goes on to say that the racial realism that we must seek acknowledging all of that is simply a hard eyed view of racism as it is and our subordinate role in it. So an acknowledgement that white people won when they created and facilitated the transatlantic and slave transatlantic slave trade and then erected laws slave laws um uh, uh, entire legal system thereafter um systems of uh, child uh, orphanages that were created to um lock kids up after their parents were locked up and and forced into chattel um slave labor um acknowledging that all of that's true we we just need to accept it we, he goes on to say, must realize as our slave forebears did that the struggle for freedom is at bottom a manifestation of our humanity, which survives and grows stronger through resistance to oppression, even if oppression is never overcome. Um, this is page 308 of the book. Um, and so again, I, I keep spending a lot of time with this passage because for me, I think what Derek is inviting us to do is accept what is and has been um, period full stop um, and let go of this weighted hope that at some point white people are going to be magnanimous and altruistic and otherwise abdicate the power that has allowed them to feel protected heretofore uh, to just let that go um, and to give up the idea that at some point we're going to enjoy something that feels like or looks like equality whether that's invitations to the Met Gala or awards from the Academy or the number of PhDs conferred, right? Um, that's sort of inconsequential. I think the point is that uh, we have to accept things as they are and then begin to build from there. Um, and heretofore, I don't know that we've done that um, in part because we um, don't like to sit in the discomfort of acknowledging that racism is as real as it is. Look, Algeria, thank you for the love from Algeria. We'll send it right back your way too. Um, and the reality is that all of our countries and communities are fraught with um, tensions that result from uh, white people being greedy um, and often having access to our militia. Um, that's just a part of the problem. Let me text Ben. I know he is juggling. I don't, know. I don't know that anybody has answers to any of this stuff. I shouldn't say that. People have answers. I think I have lots of answers, or at least contributions to answers. Uh, but it's complicated. It is incredibly, incredibly complicated. Um, I wonder if I can. Let's do this. But yes, if you have that need, a uh, ginger shot, do. Okay, yes, ginger shot, okay. Do they have that on Amazon Prime? 
not asking for a friend. I will get a ginger shot. I also just need a nap, is what it sounds like. Look, you know when black folks like, look, you look tired, child, rest. It's a problem. Because black folks are complimentary. <laughs> Especially when they say it in love. You know it is a problem. Noted. Nate, what's going on, young sir? Can't wait for you to be uh, leading uh, countries. This one in particular in a few years. I am just texting for the pen. Thanks, see, look black people. You tired, you need a nap at a ginger shop but your skin looks good. You know the secret to uh, good skin? Money, products, the ability to go to sleep, be rejuvenated at a spa to rest. I'm trying to explain that to my niece. Most of the things that kids get teased about are a result of poverty. Them not actually having access to money to buy clothes or the kinds of uh, products that assist in making your skin look hydrated. Yep, I think that's right, Kelly. Uh, Kelly said, we in our daily lives, although exhausted, have to ask questions, good questions. Uh, and I think often about my mentor, Freeman Robowski. Um, shout out to Freeman Robowski, president of UMBC. Um, Freeman often says that um, the most important thing that we can do is to teach students to ask uh, tough questions. Um, and that as a student, uh, as a child, his parents would often ask him when he came home, did you ask a tough question today? Um, try to ask my niece that. Um, and we'll ask Jet and Jax that when they're old enough uh, to be able to engage in that conversation. <laughs> right. Although I didn't use a good cream today. I had a workout earlier and just washed my face. Um, but yes, when you exfoliate and use your good cream, the last thing you want is for somebody to say you look tired. Uh, appreciate that. So listen, good people, it's eight. At any moment, we will be joined by Ben Crump. Again, for folks who don't know, um, I imagine most of you who were here who um, engage with me um, and my brand of inclusive intersectional social justice, um, know that Ben is an, a, a civil rights attorney uh, who is here. Boom. He won't say this, but I'll tell you to get his book before he joins us. Um, and I'll talk about his book on the back end. Uh, we've got about half an hour with. Um... <laughs> hey! Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm doing all right, good brother. How are you doing? I've been busy today, David. Uh, but I, I would not miss the opportunity to talk to you uh, and try to thank you publicly for doing everything you do to try to uplift our society and our culture and make the world a better place for all of us. Listen, brother, I'm going to thank you. I was just on watching you in April. I know that you have been... Uh, in addition to doing the work of attempting to represent a number of our families throughout the country, are also trying to talk to anyone who will listen um, so that we can amplify um, all of the messages um, and calls to action that are important in this moment. So hear me when I say thank you, um, not only for what you're doing again for each individual family, but also for your service as a member of the board of MBJC. Um, that's never lost on me and I'm uh, ever grateful for all that you do. Hey, very proud. We've been at this a long time, David. You remember y'all helped us with David, uh, with Trayvon, you and Angela and Joe. So yep. I never forget people. Shout out to oh, Impact, yeah. Impact Your World, Angela Ride, Joe Briggs. Now I appreciate that. Look, uh, Ben, yeah, I know we have uh, we have you for a little less than a half an hour, and I want to make sure we can cover some ground. Um, there are three names that I want to mention, and then two questions that I'd like for you to just talk through. Um, and the names are, and I don't know if you can see me, but I do have on our brother, my Nigel shirt. Um, so Nigel okay. Shelby is one. I um, also want to say her name and lift up the name of our sister, Brianna Taylor. Um, and then, of course, the nation has really been talking about, and we spent a lot of last week uh, learning about and catching up to the reality of what happened to our brother, Ahmaud Arbery. And so I'd love for you really just to highlight for folks who might not know the details, haven't been able to catch you, 
what should they know about each of those cases? And then what, what, what should we be doing? What's the call to action or what ways can people be helpful to you as we try and seek justice for our brothers and sisters? Absolutely, David. Thank you for using your platform to get the word out, especially about Nigel Shelby. It's so tragic when you think about a 14-year-old kid whose life is just starting to be feel that he has nowhere to turn to in the world other than to end his life because people are bigoted and prejudiced and racist against him because of who he chooses to love. Right. And it's just, you have to ask yourself, what kind of world is it where adults who know better would not offer help to a child who comes to you for help, especially somebody in the school system? And so I have the honor of representing Nigel Shelby's family, along with attorney Jasmine Rand, and under the uh, counsel of the National Black Justice Coalition, where we are bringing a lawsuit against the school district because this young 14-year-old kid was being bullied for being gay. And when he went to those who were supposed to be there to help him, they told him well, if he didn't want to continue to be being picked on and bullied, he being gay was a choice. Right. And that's what they told him. And then in one of the worst things I've ever read in my life, one of the saddest things I've ever read is his suicide note to his mother where he says, um, Mom, I tried so hard not to be gay. I really tried. And it's just heartbreaking when you think about that, that he felt that the world would not accept him as he is. Yeah. And so... We pray that you all will join us in fighting in the court of public opinion so the unknown Niger Shelby's that exist out there won't feel that they're all alone. And if you join us, maybe David and us can set a precedence in the court of law where people know they'll be held accountable who discriminate against our children on some just ignorant grounds. I think that's and so that's, that's Niger Shelby. And uh, the action call for that, really, we're in Alabama, David. Yeah. And may not be as forward thinking in Alabama. So when we have to go to court, we need some of y'all to come down there with us and not just have it be David, Jasmine, and I against uh, a lot of people who I guess I would categorize as the enemies of equality. That's it. The, name a thing a thing. That's important, right? And so I also, I'll post after this. Um, encourage people to pick up your book. I also will um, link to some Nigel Shelby resources and just encourage people to say his name. I heard you say uh, in conversation again with our sister April, if you ran with Maude, you should stand with Brianna. You should also say Nigel's name. Uh, you mentioned Nigel. Uh, Nigel would have been 16 in February, um, right? His birthday is a couple weeks before mine. Uh, and it weighs on me now, the number 26, right? We know that Ahmad. Aubrey would have celebrated his 26th birthday last Friday. Brianna was 26 when she was murdered in her home. And Trayvon, if he were still here with us, got rested, so would also be 26. Uh, before we talk about Ahmad, who uh, more people know about and have been introduced to, uh, please share a bit more about, uh, again, Brianna, our sister who was 26 and was murdered by the police in her home. Yeah, and it's so outrageous when you think about what happened in the tragic death of Breonna Taylor. And you're right, if you ran for Mar, you should stand for Breonna because we can't have these hashtags go viral when it's just young black men being killed by the police. But when they kill our sisters That's too, right. we have to represent for them even more. That's right. Uh, so the fact that two months have passed since they executed Breonna, and nobody's talking about her is unacceptable. On March the 23rd, Brianna was a EMT worker on the front line of the coronavirus. She was helping people, David, uh, you know, with their, who have got contracted this virus. Yeah. Her mother, main concern was that her daughter be safe because her mother also worked in the hospital field Wear your gloves, wear your mask, and everything. We don't want you to contract the coronavirus and die from this virus. 
And so that was her mother's main concern, never worrying about that Brianna would be home sleeping in bed with her boyfriend. And then at one o'clock in the morning, the police will botch uh, execution of a search warrant over somebody they already had in custody okay. when they used a firing ram to bust open her door at one in the morning. And David, her boyfriend, uh, Kenny, he was a licensed registered good owner. And so it really begs the question, do black people have a right to the Second Amendment when you uh, bust in our door to protect our property and protect our person and so forth? And because what he did, they called 911 to say, we think somebody trying to burglarize us. Mm -hmm. But the police came in. He shot at them as they, he's thinking that burglar is coming to do harm to him and his woman in their right. house. Right. And so the police then was, he shot, I mean, a barrage of bullets. More than 20, 20 to 30 rounds, I understand, right? Yeah, and at least eight. The funeral director believed it was 10, but at least eight bullets mutilated Sister Brianna's body. She was barely clothed. She was in her underwear, for God's sake, and they shot bullets, indiscriminate neighbors, said bullets went into their apartment. These uh, three reckless and rogue cops who executed a search warrant that they did not have to execute. They had the subject in of custody. the warrant already in custody. If they would have just checked that, it would have been... Brianna will still be living and her mother heart wouldn't be broken. Her 20 year old sister who lived with her, who thank God wasn't home that night mm -hmm. would, you know, they just don't know how to make sense of why this innocent young lady who everybody say was just a wonderful human being. She lived to try to help people. Right. She wanted to always be in the nursing and the hospital industry so she could help people. Her mother said when we were doing the Good Morning America interview that, you know, Brianna never thought uh, twice about going to help coronavirus victims. She didn't care about herself because she said she was made and put on this earth to help people. And that's what she did. And but because these reckless, careless police officers of the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department uh executing this innocent sister she would be here so we all gotta call the police chief okay i mean flood him with calls and the commonwealth attorney in louisville kentucky okay they gotta know that this mother and this 20 year old sister are not by themselves because for too much and her sister has been posting uh janiah has been posting on social media every day trying to say my sister life matter and they labeled her sister on the police report as a suspect. And she's like, hold on, my sister isn't a suspect? Yeah. She's never committed a crime in her life. So, And this bothers me, right? Because if it weren't for you and me having a relationship with you and knowing Michelle Taylor, a sister that goes by Feminista Jones, I would not have known that Brianna was murdered weeks ago. This isn't something that just happened. This happened weeks ago. And so um, we all should say her name and lift her up again. And you mentioned specifically us reaching out. Um, so I want to name them. It's Mayor Greg Fisher and the Commonwealth Attorney is Thomas Wines. I will post their phone numbers to my story. What should people say or ask for when we call the police department, the attorney general, um, and the mayor? What's the ask? Because the cops were in plain clothes, they didn't have any video camera and so forth, which was very convenient for them. We can't get the body camera video. But what we can demand is a re release of the 911 tapes and also to terminate and arrest these cops for the death of an innocent woman mm -hmm. who, had they simply followed their policies and procedures, would still be living. At first, David, for the longest time, they kept saying, they're not going to announce. They're not going to announce. But because of you all, they have put so much pressure on them that they came out and said, well, we didn't announce because it was a no-knock warrant. 
and everything. So they changing the story to try to justify, but they can't justify the unjustifiable that Breonna Taylor should be living right and they now. never should have put it in her house like that. And Kenny Hunter, her boyfriend, had every right, like any other American, to the Second Amendment to try to protect him, his woman, and their property. If these were, where's the NRA at? You know? Well, this is also why, interesting enough, yesterday on this platform, we had this discussion about the Second Amendment and what my sister Michelle said is, we shouldn't be expecting for the NRA to show up because racism, but there are black gun clubs and black gun owner associations that we should be looking to. And so I'm gonna circle back, not this week, but next week when we have our check-in call, just to talk about how we can connect some of these dots because I will be registering to own a gun uh, because this is where we are in the world. And I also want to know that I will be protected if I, in fact, have to stand my ground. Exactly. Because these self-defense and stand your ground rules just don't work when it's black people trying to defend ourselves. Which so, makes, and so and you said something to me when we were driving to Huntsville um, to meet with um, uh, Kamika Shelby, Nigel's mom, which is that in America, we get the promise of uh, the opportunity for justice, right? And then more recently, I've heard you say that while there's one justice system, the way that we as black people experience it is very different than white people. I, yeah. It troubles me that there was not a tape, right? And that, that, that it requires public outcry for police officers and white police officers in particular to tell the truth. And we, for a fact, know that the, the two white men that lynched Ahmaud Arbery would not have been even arrested if it were not for the fact that it were caught on tape. So can you talk a little bit about any of the latest developments with Ahmaud Arbery, but also like, what about those of us who now worry about being murdered and it not being recorded? Are, are us having that kind of protection that it seems like we now need to have in order to have the potential of the first part of the justice process be enacted when we're murdered? Yeah, it is so sad, David, that there are two justice systems that exist in America, apparently one for black America and one for white, white America. And you're right, it's getting to the point now where black people have to have objective evidence. It has to be so clear and convincing for us just to get simple justice because we know the precedence in America for 400 years is that white people could kill black people and nobody be held accountable for it. That's and right. so, we, and then even when you think about the people who are wrongfully convicted now, we have to go to this high standard of DNA uh, the fact that you can have eyewitnesses recanting testimony, you can have alibi witnesses and everything. They say, no, no, black man, unless you got DNA, you're going to stay in prison. Right. But they don't hold other people to that high burden like they hold us to the high burden. And, you know, why wasn't it enough until we saw the video to say that a black man with a T-shirt and shorts and jogging shoes on was a jogger and not a burglar because you didn't have any burglary tools, you didn't have any burglary masks, you didn't have any burglary bags. But even if he were, but even if he were a burglar, uh, Brother Ben, does that justify his murder? Right, and that's the thing that I think I struggle with in these moments is because, right, the same thing with Brianna. If it were for the fact that she were an EMT and sacrificed in the way that black women often do with their own bodies, would, 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 would her murder be justifiable, right? Like, if, if, if Mike, right, like if Mike Brown had smoked weed or Tamir has, like, there is a way that I also worry that the narrative doesn't even allow for us to think about how problematic this stuff is that black people should just be able to be. And even if he had yeah. burglarized, the, the response is you go to jail. Not that you murder him in the street. Yeah, it's not a capital offense. And you're right, John, David, it, it's like our people have to be perfect to get the benefit of consideration and the benefit of doubt and the benefit of possibility. If there's one thing they can put on you, like with Ahmad Aubrey, oh, you can just get ready. They're going to start trying to assassinate his character left every which way they can. I mean, you about to find his mugshot picture going to be released. Yeah, Facebook photos yeah. from years ago. Yeah. If he jaywalked, if he put up a middle finger on Facebook, right. it's all about to come out because they're going to assassinate his character now that they assassinated his person. And why can't our children just be children? Right. Why do they have to be perfect right. saints, angels? Especially so when cool. white kids get to be mediocre at best.
Yeah, white kids get to commit crime Let and they be. don't kill them. When you think about what happened with Dylan, Dylan Roof, Roof yeah. and Parkland uh, killer down in Parkland, Florida, police follow them for hours and take them alive, but a black uh, person accused of a crime mm -hmm. that fits a profile is shoot first and ask questions later. And so when you think about Ahmaud Aubrey, you know, I, I always say, Every chance I get on the record, David, it was not that the police saw the video that they arrested Ahmad Arbery's killers because that execution was clear on the video. It was when we, the people, yeah. saw the video that they finally arrested his killers because it caused us to be outraged right. because what we had saw, we could not unsee. Right. We had saw a lynching occur in 2020 and it enraged us and that became a public outcry. And that outcry is what led to them finally arresting this murderous duo who had that shotgun and that 357 Magnum and hunted him down like a dog in the streets and killed him. And the police, the first police on the scene and the whatever law enforcement authority said, there was not enough probable cause to arrest. Acknowledging that and the power, the people power, right, which always exists, um, what is the significance of June 26th? Uh, what's the call to action or the place where people should be investing their energy around Ahmaud Arbery specifically? Thank you so much, uh, call to action. And, and this may be the final point uh, as uh, adding your friend and them are pulling me away. Tell them I say, hey, brother. Uh, I will. Uh, on, Georgia doesn't have a hate crime law. As Marcus Aubrey Sr., uh, his father has been saying from the very beginning, that the roles were reversed, and it was me and Ahmad in that truck, and we were chasing down Gregory McMichael's son, Travis, while he jogged through the neighborhood and killed him in broad daylight with a shotgun and 357 Magnum, we not only would have got arrested that day, we would have been charged with murder and uh, been looking at the death penalty even worse. That's right. We would be facing the hate crime That's right. law from the federal government, which underscores the fact that in Georgia, they're one of four states that don't have a hate crime law. And They've been trying to pass it for years now, but every time it gets into the Senate, it stalls. Well, if you want to do something about Ahmaud Arbery and his legacy, we should have helped pass the Ahmaud Arbery law, which is finally to get the hate crime law in Georgia passed. And on June 26th, the Senate is back in session in Atlanta, Georgia. We should be organizing and strategizing and trying to do everything to use this momentum to make sure that we get a hate crime finally passed in the state of Georgia. It's just unconscionable that you will say that you can't have anti-lynching laws and you can't have hate crime laws right. in 2020 in America right. to punish, make sure no matter what they are punished on every level, state yeah. or federal level. So that is the call to action and that's what we can do in the name of Ahmad Aubrey, for all of you who proclaim to ride with mine, let's keep riding. And we know it's possible because we saw what happened with Trayvon's Law in Florida after the people pushed that. Ben, I know you got to jump, but let me ask you one final question. Um, I know that uh, while being a civil rights lawyer and advocating for our liberation is uh, incredibly important to you, um, also being a father is incredibly important to you. Um, and you know that I talk all day about teaching the babies. How are you having this conversation with your babies? Uh, when Brooklyn asks daddy uh, what's going on at work or when she sees pictures of Nigel or Brianna or Ahmad, how do you talk to her about what it's like to be black in America today? Yeah, you know, it, it, and children are so aware. They pick up on everything and so, Brooklyn, because of what I do, she literally says, Daddy, did the police kill another black person? Mm -hmm. And I have to explain to her that uh, some bad police did bad things, but not all police are bad, and that we have to always try not to judge a book by its cover. But I also tell her 
but that's my greatest fear and concern for you that people won't get to know you, Brooklyn, that they will look at you and make all kind of prejudiced conclusions about you. And she then would ask question after question because children just don't understand it. You know, racism isn't uh, a logical thing. Yeah. You know, you are taught it. And so Brooklyn still doesn't understand. I even remember on Trayvon Martin, she thought that, you know, Trayvon was going to wake up when we got the Trayvon Martin book a couple of years. And she couldn't understand that Trayvon was never coming back. So we have to have these conversations with our children far too early. Um, and I just think about Niger at 14, the kind of conversations that we must have with our children because if we don't, other people will tell them there's something wrong with them and they might start to believe it. And I just think the people who have influence on our children beyond us, when they leave our house, we better be talking to our children because other than that, you have a Niger Cherokee situation where a principal or a teacher start telling them stuff that makes them feel less valuable. I think that's right. Uh, and I know that Brooklyn uh, appreciates having you as her dad and we appreciate you being uh, one of our nation's greatest advocates. I know you have to jump in. Uh, thank you. We will continue this conversation. No, whatever you need from me and NBJC, you've got it. Uh, but thank you on behalf of all of our babies and our community as well. Hey, man. Thank you and NBJC, the National Black Justice Coalition for what y'all stand for. Y'all are the new era of civil rights in America. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Go fight the good fight. Make sure you get some rest, brother. Tell Brooklyn I say hey. I will, brother. All right. Love you. Love you, too. Uh, I want to go scream and hit something. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to catch up on some of these comments and uh, just continue the discussion. Uh, for the balance of time that we have on this live. Um, I'm also going to post a bunch of resources to my story um, and encourage you all, if you're not, um, to be following MBJC on the move because much of what Ben talked about, uh, we have written um, and provided uh, resources to connect to. So for example, today um, we issued a press release about Breonna Taylor. And at the bottom of the release um, is information for the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department. Um, so their number is 502-574-7111. Again, that's 502-574-7111. Uh, the Louisville uh, mayor is Greg Fisher. His number is 502-574-2003. Again, the mayor, Greg Fisher, 502-574-2003. And the Commonwealth attorney in Louisville, Kentucky, um, or for Kentucky is Thomas Wine. His number is 502-595-2300. And for anybody who says, I talk too fast, I'm hearing my mama say, slow down, um, know that you have a powerful resource called Google that can give you this information as well. Um, that's specific to Kentucky. Um, again, the ask there is to call and ask for a release of all 911 tapes. Uh, remember, Ben said that the police did not have on body cams, um, which again, right now seems to be the only um, uh, line of defense that we have when we're murdered. Uh, and it's not otherwise captured on uh, cell phone footage. <sighs> My bystanders or other vigilantes. So call and ask for the 911 tapes to be released. Um, and then the call to ask for um, the arrest, charging, and firing of the officers involved in this incident. Um, I lost my mind for a second reading about what happened. Um, and again, imagine being asleep in your bed at 1 a.m. Um, someone kicks in your door. You don't know who. Someone kicks in your door. You are a registered gun owner, um, as your right per uh, white militia men that wrote it into um, uh, as a Second Amendment. Um, so you grab your strap um, and you are met with a barrage of bullets. Um, there was a report of a neighbor um, who had a five-year-old child who uh, found bullets in her living room. Um, that, that can't, that, that just, that, that, that makes absolutely no sense. 
um, not when they're supposed to be serving in a warrant around drugs that weren't found on the premise. Um, and so call, uh, demand those things um, as it relates to Breonna Taylor. Um, you can also, there's a um, um, standwithbreonna.org. Um, uh, Brittany Packnett has posted about that as well. You can look, look up information there. Again, as it relates to our brother Ahmad, Aubrey, June 26th is when the Georgia um, uh, uh, state um, uh, capital opens up again. Uh, the hate crimes legislation that would make lynching a uh, hate crime um, has stalled in the Senate historically. It has gotten through the House. Um, the Senate remembers where Stacey Abrams used to reside. If we're running for governor, she should be governor, but white people still shit. America. Um, and so um, call and urge the governor, Brian Kemp, to appoint a special prosecutor. Um, the governor uh, has the ability to do that, and special prosecutors have um, all types of resources that they can leverage in moments like this. Um, but then also we'll, we'll have some more information um, through NBJC around advocating for uh, federal hate crimes. Again, Georgia is one of many states, including Florida, where it's legal to discriminate against people um, based on actual or perceived identities. Um, and racism is uh, alive and well. Um, and then again, with regard to um, our brother, Nigel Shelby, uh, who I carry with me, um, a lawsuit is being filed in uh, Alabama. Um, no surprise that um, Alabama, um, uh, the legal code there makes it difficult um, to bring this kind of suit and hold uh, adults responsible for the things they should be doing for kids uh, entrusted into their care. Um, but we persist in spite of. Um, and so we'll continue to say his name and lift him up um, and talk about the responsibility we have to ensure that kids who are forced to go to school um, are victims of violence, are bullying um, at the hands of their peers, are the adults um, who should know better. Um, and if they don't, can elect to be elsewhere. Um, and so those are some of the call to actions and things that we can do. Uh, someone asked about um, Ben's book. Um, um, which you can get as well. It's called Open Season, Legalized Genocide of People of Color. Um, so you can read about Ben and his work um, there. Um, you could also please follow Feminista Jones, my sister, Michelle Taylor. We had a dope conversation, the first of many, about the Second Amendment and Black people being armed. Um, I'm really excited. NBJC will be hosting some uh, legal fellows this summer um, that are going to help us think about um, how to better use existing laws that white people uh, benefit from when they stand their ground, uh, but don't seem to work for us. Um, we're otherwise on quicksand. Um, so that's coming, and we'll continue to talk about that. Uh, listen, Black and Carry doesn't work for us. Black and unarmed doesn't work for us either. So I'm, I'm still leaning into where uh, Feminista is, which is I know more instances of Black people being harmed, uh, not being protected or armed than I do um, of those with um, weapons. So I'm going to take my chances, and we'll talk about it on the, on the back end. It can't be police protocol. They just enter a house and shoot. It is when you're Black. Um, The neighbors can file a case. Yeah, the sad thing about this for me is that um, when the remedy is file a case um, or take your chances in the, the legal system, um, a lot is already gone, right? Um, Brianna's dead. Ain't nothing gonna bring her back. Justice would be her being here to be able to articulate her side of what happened. Um, that's not gonna happen. It's not possible. She should be alive. Um, a black woman in her underwear sleeping definitely is a threat to the police. Remember what Malcolm X said some decades ago, that's still so very true. Oh, I'm just exhausted. A suspect, she's a victim. Yes, she's a victim. Thanks for connecting with Ed Reed. Enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and having to have this conversation. We should pray for Ben Crump, know that there are people actively working against him. The system is not designed for us, let's be clear. Brian Stevenson said some time ago, imagine for a second, just for a second, that the system works exactly as it was designed to. There's liberation in us acknowledging that. It is modern day genocide. It is 
lynching, high tech lynching, if that. They chase him down in the middle of the street with guns. Vacate charges against the boyfriend. Yes, that's a separate ask. Um, we'll circle back and ask more questions about the case um, involving uh, Mr. Kelly, I believe is um, Brianna's boyfriend's name. Juneteenth is coming up. We definitely should think about ways to organize and uh, leverage digital uh, advocacy and community building opportunities um, to fill gaps. Brianna Taylor was 26. We should say her name. We should all register. We should register to vote. And those of us who want to should register for guns. Most definitely. I wish this was unbelievable, but America. I'm so, uh, I am live right next to where Florian Mo got shot. I passed that memorial every single fucking day. I can't imagine that trauma. I can't imagine that trauma. Um, and I pray that you have access to some resources to support you in dealing with that because we shouldn't have to endure the kind of trauma that we experience daily as black people um, in America and a country that we built for free. Shout out to Angela Rye. Um, yeah, I don't even want to try and litigate or imagine what Ahmad was doing. He was black and that was enough for him to be murdered. Uh, that is a sad reflection on where we are as a country. It's also a sad reality that um, our digital advocacy matters has been underscored. If nothing else, I hope that everybody takes away that you uh, posting an image, sharing a hashtag, uh, saying and tweeting and lifting up her name, observing moments of silence, um, acknowledging Nigel Shelby, celebrating their birthdays, lifting up their parents and their families, acknowledging them during moments of Thanksgiving. Um, all of that matters um, and is significant in us continuing to endure uh, and at some point overcome. Thank God this went viral, yes, but think about how many babies are murdered whose names we never know. That's the thing that kills me. Um, Boss Queen, there's a petition that is being circulated by Color of Change. You can access that at mbjc.org um, that will allow you to um, sign a petition um, in Georgia in particular. Um, I think that answers your question, um, mbjc.org. It is hard to explain to anybody. Um, the thing that I appreciate most about children is that they're logical. Um, and so things like racism and white supremacy don't make sense because they're not supposed to, they don't, they shouldn't. Um, but I do think that we owe it to them to sit in the discomfort, um, to allow them to ask questions and for us to acknowledge that there are lots of answers that we just don't have. Uh, I miss most thinking about having these conversations with my babies. How do they kill Nipsey and keep Trump? Oh. Tuh. How did they kill Nipsey but keep we keep Trump? I ain't gonna say we because I ain't got no parts of that. A word. Hardest conversation to have with your baby. Uh, yep. God bless y'all, thank y'all. Look, I'm just trying to do my part. Um, I accept the responsibility I have in all of this. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I will uh, pin the numbers, appreciate that. Let me, um, look, let me do this. What happened to her boyfriend? I don't know, I'm gonna ask that question. I will post to my story right after I sign off of this, the, um, actually it's there already. If you go to my story now, you can uh, swipe up and it'll take you to the release. Actually, let's do that. <laughs> um, you can find the release and then all of the numbers are there, um, both in the case of Ahmaud Arbery and what you can do in Georgia, as well as Brianna um, and what you can do in um, Kentucky. Her boyfriend was charged with attempted murder um, and needs help also. So there's an answer to what happened. Um, so we will lean into that and figure out the case as well. What needs to be done on 626 is to uh, anyone who is in Georgia um, who's a registered voter in Georgia in particular should call your um, elected official, in particular your state senator, and ensure that you implore them 
uh, you will hold them accountable for passing uh, hate crimes legislation. Um, I will post the bill number um, that has been introduced in previous sessions. Um, also, you can look up there are leaders like Park Cannon, um, who's in the House of Representatives, who is an amazing leader um, for our community. Um, you can link up with them and find ways to support the efforts um, that they've been leading um, in previous cycles. Um, there are folks in here who are in Kentucky. Um, we should be advocating um, on the ground um, and getting that done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Desmond Franklin was killed on April 9th, 2020 in Cleveland. I don't know Desmond Franklin. Of course, school does Cleveland. Can't even finish typing my brother's name before it comes up in Cleveland. So, Desmond Franklin, 22 was shot on Thursday, when was this, April 10th, so a month ago, by an off-duty police officer in Cleveland during an incident that started when he reportedly pulled a gun while driving. Oh, yes, this was the police chase that was online. The fact that I'm both like, I don't know this young man, and then I'm like, oh, actually I do, is uh, a reflection of this trauma um, that happens in these moments. Um, I do recall having been introduced to, I didn't have the emotional capacity um, to finish digesting the video, uh, but I saw um, part of the video of the brother who was in a live police chase um, and was murdered by the police officer who stood above him and said something fairly disrespectful, completely disrespectful. Um, I don't know in this moment if that young man is, uh, based on what I've been able to pull up, um, Desmond, um, but I will do the work to figure that out um, and will also do my part to lift his name. I thank you, um, brother Stan, the lawyer, um, for lifting his name up um, in this moment. Nope, I appreciate you. Yep, Sean Reed is a young man who I'm thinking about who was murdered online. Um, and now we need to lift up and add to that list. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Desmond Franklin, um, who was also murdered. Desmond Franklin, Desmond Franklin, Desmond Franklin, somebody's son, somebody's <sighs> baby. Desna was in a car with a 17 year old who was shot and taken to the hospital and it was in stable condition. Franklin then crashed the car into a cemetery fence not far from where the incident began. And this is what they will use to justify his murders that he was facing felony charges and felony charges in two separate cases. What that has to do with him being murdered has is lost on me. Um, Instagram is letting us know that uh, we all, I need, I'll speak for myself, need to take a collective break. Um, know that I will continue to do my part to try and uh, shine a light uh, on these issues and fill gaps and otherwise connect people to resources. Um, please visit mbjc.org. Um, also will drop more uh, information in my stories. Um, and tomorrow you can join me at eight o'clock as I will be talking about all this stuff um, and a new uh, data collection effort called COVID While Black and Queer uh, with my sister, Ify Ike. Um, so I will see all of you. Yeah, Ebony, I see you. Um, shout out to my sister, Ebony Riley, a leader with National Action Network. My sister, my friend, um, Shari, there's so much, so much going on. Um, please take care of yourselves. Um, I too am praying for everybody Black. That's right, Brianna, we have to. I love y'all.